With the new facility, Channel 10 was able to produce more local programming. Vegas Digest, a half-hour community affairs show, and Interview, an audience participation talk show, both regularly featured some of Vegas's biggest stars, including Sammy Davis Jr., David Brenner, Bill Cosby, and Leo Sayer. Liberace also frequently appeared on various programs. He showed his support by donating a very appropriate and generous gift. And folks, I don't know if you know, but I want you to know that this Baldwin Grand Piano was donated to Channel 10 by the Liberace Foundation, Las Vegas, 1980. Liberace came into the station one day and was going to appear on the air in the fundraiser and we had some old upright school district issue piano there and that was not something he was going to play and so he had a grand piano delivered to the station performed on it and contributed it to the station and it's still there to this day many celebrities including the Rat Pack donated their time to support Channel 10 and I feel the same way about public television because public television is really for the people. In 1979, Friends of Channel 10 hosted an on-air 30-hour fundraising marathon. Frank Sinatra used to come in and would appear for us on the breaks during our fundraising drives, usually. There are many legacies that Vegas PBS has established through the years. One is a commitment to giving a voice to unheard community members. Vegas PBS doesn't shy away from tackling the complicated issues that shape our society. One such documentary, titled The Road to Las Vegas, was produced by then Minority Affairs Director and Producer Lee Winston. The documentary chronicled you know, their struggles in this community living in what some of them called a la carte board city in North Las Vegas. Uh, some of the individuals, African American individuals that worked as dam workers at Hoover Dam. Um, Greg Morris, who I became acquainted with, we uh, asked him if he would narrate the documentary and it was probably one of the last projects he did before he died. But it set it up and we won a regional award from CPB for the documentary. And it was an important, um, it still plays an important role, I think, in, in the communities. In the early 1980s, the station began production on a series called Real to Real, focusing on Las Vegas and rural counties in Nevada. Real to Real was an extremely satisfying period in my life professionally. We literally produced a documentary almost every four to six weeks. Uh, one documentary I'm particularly proud of is a documentary I did on Searchlight. And of course, Nevada's favorite son, Senator Harry Reid, came from Searchlight. Well, of course, Searchlight is where I was born. My family's buried there. My brother still lives there. I, that's where I have my home. And just to reflect on the heydays of searchlight and not so heydays of searchlight and find out where we are now is important and that story was told on public broadcasting here in Las Vegas.